Uh, good morning. So today we're going to start this text. It's called the Ornament of the Mahayana Sutra. Um, this Ornament of the Mahayana Sutra is a uh, originate. It's called the Five Dharma of a Mitriya. Um, so uh, what happens, uh, uh, of course, when Buddha came on this planet, you know, giving Dharma teachings and uh, um, uh, generally Mahayana and Vajrayana is the only gift to the mostly advanced disciples. And uh, Hinayana is a gift to the public, you know, public teachings. So uh, that is one is different. Uh, so, so that reason, <clears throat> Um uh, Mahayana is not that much popular around that time. Maybe after the Buddha, actually. Then um, maybe about 400 years later, Nagarjuna came. And he uh, uh, ex uh, extended also um, give more teaching on the Mahayana. Um, but still, uh, during the Nagarjuna time, the Taranatha said, actually, majority of monks are Hinayana. I think this reason, Holiness Dalai Lama's translator, Thudin Jimba said, Nalenda's majority monk was actually Theravada monk. I think around the Nagarjuna's time, I think according to the Taranatha's uh, history, I think Nagarjuna's time uh, mostly is Theravada. In the, even Nalenda, we think the Nalenda is only Mahayana, you know, because it's a, uh, run by uh, Saraha, Nal Nagarjuna, and those all the great Mahayana. But I think uh, some of them are not necessarily uh, Mahayana. Uh, uh, but uh, then later, slowly, slowly, because of the, I think that circumstance, Mahayana is a kind of like a uh, distinguish. Can I say distinguish? Became smaller, smaller number. And um, when um, uh, Asanga came like uh, on, around the fourth century, uh, Mahayana is, uh, I, I think is like after 800 years later, Buddha passed away. And the Mahayana, there are some Mahayana follower but they don't have complete teachings. They, uh, maybe they have a generated bodhicitta. I think they are like a we Mahayana. <laughs> <laughs> we receive some bodhisattva vow and receive some, uh, you know, empowerment. Then we said, oh, we are Vajrayana, but I have no clue, you know. <laughs> I think similar like that. So, uh, so that, that, that is one reasons. Two is if, uh, actually, uh, you know, what happened was a, uh, uh, Asanga's mother was a nun. So she was in the feverishly monk in one lifetime. And she was a scholar in the monk, scholar monk. You know, then scholar, they have lots of debate. Okay. Uh, so, so during the debate, one time he was becoming like arrogant because I think he was a good debater, but uh, also arrogant one. So he he said to the his com, or compan, compan, companion, companion, not companion, like Colleagues? a no no no, the somebody who debating him. Competitor, not competitor. Um, yeah, the opponent. Uh, opponent. He said to the opponent, "Oh, your wisdom is like women's wisdom, <laughs> you know, silly one." So, so because of that, and Aulok the Shora said, "I'm your teacher to him." So I will be continually your teacher, but because you name like that to the monk, you know, scholar, like, a, you know, you act like woman, you know, uh, uh, and uh, you will be, many lifetime, you will be born as a woman. So that reason, Asanga's mother was a born, but even she was a born as a girl, she had a great uh, knowledge, from the previously, remember last Dharma, and she had continually received teaching from the Aulaki Shora, and she was a, a great uh, deal of a, her own way of a great understanding of the Dharma. But uh, her, you know, capacity is not good enough to can 
uh, you know, uh, uh, explore the more about the Mahayana. So then he sacrificed, she sacrificed her own vow and she met with a royal uh, this family, you know, uh, guy and uh, had a Asanga. And later she met with another guy. Uh, he was also Burmese caste and uh, Basubudu. So those two brothers. Since uh, since they are little, like Asanga and Basubudu, they are since they are little, she trained them. You know all the uh, uh, you know try to train them, make uh, them f favorable to more like a uh, become you know, scholarly. So like from the sense childhood, she trained all the whatever accessible education there is, she gave to them. So so they became quite uh, great educated ch children. Uh, I think Asanga is maybe a few, a uh, little while young, much uh, maybe older than Basubatu. So um, then, um, when they kind of training to the adult, you know, Asanga was training to the adult and he asked to uh, his mom, what's my like a family business? You know, what is my, they normally in India uh, at that time, they follow to the, their family lineage, you know, business. So, and she said, you are not uh, born for uh, you know, continue the family business or whatever, you know, the, the I don't know what to call that. It's not family trade. business. Yeah. You just say the family trade. Yeah, family trade. You're not born for the continue with the family trade. You are born for, you know, um, serve to the uh, general Buddhism and particularly Mahayana because Mahayana is a decline. There are lots of incidents happen with, for the Mahayana teachings. So general uh, uh, Buddhism and particularly Mahayana, lots of incident happen. So she she really want to be you know teach uh, ex more explore the Mahayana. So then uh, when he joined to the monastery, he received first first year he, he received the novice vows, and uh, during the novice vow for first year he served to the his abbot and sangha. So that is actually in the monastery system as a, when you turn to the novice, you know, first, you know, when you enter into the monastery, you receive only novice vows. The novice is basically serving to the Sangha. It's a, uh, uh, it's a kind of system that way. I think because uh, uh, um, supposed to be a Sangha cannot have the serving, you know. These days some monastery have the people who work for cleaning, you know. But then I think originally maybe shouldn't have that. So Sangha have to serve themselves. So who is the, so see, you know, junior one, uh, they serve. So novice, basically novice one. I think that's true in the Samya monastery, you know, in Tibet. Only novice one bring to the tea soup in the, you know, uh, in the puja. But if you are fully ordained, you don't have to do all of those service part. So I think that's according to the uh, uh, Vinaya, a fully ordained cannot become a servant, but the novice have to serve. So he, he served for the, uh, one year in the monastery. And that, I, don't, I don't know which monastery because Taranada didn't say exactly which monastery, but in that monastery he served. I think it's Magad area in the central India. I'm not sure it's Nalenda, I don't think so Nalenda, but there's one monastery he served and he became a fully ordained. After a year, he became fully ordained. So maybe he became a monk around maybe age 18 or 19. Then on the 20, you are eligible to become a fully ordained. So <clears throat> once he became a fully ordained and he, he was so intelligent that Every year he can remember like a, like a, like a hundred thousand words of uh, teachings. So in five years he studied like that. So he became great 
uh, scholar actually around that times, so whatever accessible, uh, uh, you know, teachings, he pretty much master on them. Uh, <clears throat> where we are now. <laughs> so, um, um, so after um, uh, five years of study uh, in the monastery and, uh, but still uh, uh, certain things he, um, he haven't had complete understand, especially come to the one, come to the Mahayana teachings. So then he want to receive the direct teaching, one particular, you know, uh, calmingly connected in deity. So he received the empowerment. I think that empowerment also received from the same uh, uh, the Pintida, you know, from where he became an ordained. So uh, uh, um, he received the empowerment. Uh, there's a no really exactly what empowerment he received, but later um, he wrote Midriya Sadhana according to the magical illusion. Sometimes it's called the magical, uh, you know, not, not called the, uh, uh, no, no, no. It's, I try to write down the. Yeah, this it's called the Tibetan called the Yutri Tower. It's a it's a belong to the item Vajrasattva uh, Tantra. It's a, sometimes called the web of the illusion. Sometimes called the magical net. Translate. So according to that, uh, uh, according to that Tantra, he wrote the Midriya Satana. So Tarana the guess. I think he received the. Uh, 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 magical illusion, uh, magical nets, uh, tantric empowerment from that. So uh, he, I mean, this this story is a well known. Then he meditated three years in the there's one particular cave, and uh, and when he have no sign of any accomplishment in three years, then when he kind of like a discourage himself from his retreat and he come out. When he came out, he saw near the cave, you know, there's a bird nest and bird come go from the nest to out and in. And because of the, his feather touched to the rock and rock is a, a you know, uh, cut by feather touching. Then he thought if possibly, if you put the effort in up, I mean, it, you know, it's impossible because my you know, effort is not strong enough because look, this bird, you know, just by flying itself, just coming, going from the cape and cut this many rocks from the feather. So he went back, did three more years, then come out. And, uh, but they still have no experience, nothing, nothing sign. So when he came out and he saw the rock, as a shape by the water, for, you know, falling. So we see that kind of things a lot. So then he's, he went back again. So he did like a few times like that. So totally he stayed 12 years. After the 12 years, still there's no sign, nothing accomplishing. And when he went to the market, then he saw the wounded, uh, you know, dog. Yeah. And uh, he want to remove the, uh, the uh, what called this maggots? maggots from the dog, but he maggot have to survive somewhere, you know. So he want to cut his flesh, so he give to the the local someone who have the sore, borrow the sore, and cut the, for he give his own uh, stick and a begging bowl as a exchange of the sore. So he cut his flesh and tried to remove the maggot and uh, there's no dog, there's no maggot and so the Buddha Mitriya. And Buddha Mitriya said, because you are 12 years meditation uh, and make less your negative karma or obscuration is become a, a kind of like a uh, reduce, but because of your, your great compassion totally eliminated. So that way you can see me. So then Buddha Midriya asked him to what you wishing. So he said, I want to, you know, understand that depth level of a Mahayana, you know, not just only uh, surface part, I want to depth level. But then Midriya took him to Tushida 
and uh, give teaching there. Some saying is a, uh, you know, uh, like a 15 month, I mean, like a uh, like few, few months, but a lot of stories saying say 50 years. And uh, that 50 years, Taranatha said, because of some Sometime in Indian calendar, one month as a, a count as a two. You know, we call the waxing moon and a rainy moon. So they count as a two. So actually 25 years count as a 50 years. So 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 he, he, Taranada believe he stayed 25 years uh, in in uh, Tushita and received all the teachings on the Mahayana. And uh, he, then that, that way he brought the uh, five dharma of a Midriya. So if you look at the five dharma of the Midriya, I say, Buddha Midriya taught one time. How we know is uh, all those five, you know, normally texts, they also have a pay homage, you know, then uh, they go to the uh, whole text and conclusion is a dedication. But the five dharma pay homage is only on a one, Text is the ornament of the realization. Have a pay homage, and the dedication is only in one text. Is a uh, udra tadra, and a lot between three ornament of Mahayana sutra. Uh, you know, then there's a two more uh, texts. They don't have those pay homage or dedication. Reason is because they are taught same time all all five texts. So that way, there's only one pay homage and one dedication from those five. So, so, so that is a, he received teaching and he came to the human realm and he started giving teaching. And particularly, I think he uh, establishing Dharma really well and built lots of temple in Afghanistan and South India. At the Afghanistan, he was invited by the business people. You know, ancient time, the Afghanistan is the one of the uh, so Silk roads, like main, you know. So I think uh, Buddhism is a went through the margin route. Yeah. Make sense? Mm -hmm. There's a like a two two main margin route. One is a silk road. One is a, a boat. Yeah. So Indonesia and uh, Thailand, those are really like a, a main route of a. Uh, from the boat. So that way, Buddhism went through, I think mainly went through that. One is called the Southern Dharma, one is called the Northern Dharma, I think. And the Southern is more like Theravada tradition. Maybe I think before Theravada, even the Vajrayana went there, I think so. So, but it oh, 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 doesn't matter that. So, so uh, and largest gathering of the Mahayana Fully ordained, I think, is the only Nagarjun, they're what called the Asanga's time. He was the, uh, one of the, I think, perilous uh, teacher for the Mahayana. Even uh, Nagarjuna's time, not that many monks who follow to the Mahayana. They say. But he never spent uh, you know, those all his you know, student or disciple. He never stay on the gather of the more than 25 months. Regularly, he only spent, he stay like around 25. He, he never had a huge, uh, what called a community. Yeah. yeah, he's really stay small community. And then largest is the 25. And uh, I think later his life, he uh, stay in the Nalenda long period of time. And they say he lived uh, like over 150 years or something, uh, Asanga. So, so that is the best uh, briefly story. And he wrote many commentary on the, uh, especially on those, uh, on those texts. And this, um, this text, five, four, five, um, five Dharma of the Midriyas, so four, including this one, I think translate in Tibet maybe around 10th century. Uh, Udra Tandra is a later translated, you know, um, I think like 12th or 13th century. 
because around that time Uttara Tantra wasn't in India, it is uh, somehow is vanished. And uh, later, and uh, marvelous teacher, uh, what called uh, Mitiba found from the stupa, and he received the transmission from the Mitriya. So, so, so other than that, all the five translated earlier called the uh, one of the Tibetan uh, three. A really famous translator called the Kacho Shasun. I think he, this is translated by the Kaopese, one of those three main translators uh, around uh, earlier, you know, establishing the Dharma in Tibet at that time. So that's a brief story of this text. And uh, this text is a particularly uh, uh, teaching on the Bodhicitta. So uh, <clears throat> Bodhicitta, we normally in the jewel ornament said view lineage and action lineage. This is a belong to the action lineage. I think also Asanka emphasized on this lot. Reason is a, his, uh, his, his uh, teacher, uh, Silimba, Dharma Kiti, as a you know, lineage belong to the, his Bodhicitta lineage belong to the action lineage. So then, then uh, from there to Adisha brought to Tibet, and so, uh, and the Kajiba and uh, Katamba traditions all I think follow with this, uh, particularly on this. So this text is, I thought, maybe important. So that reason, actually, like in the jewel ornament, most of uh, uh, you know, quote, as they uh, bring from the ornament of the Mahayana Sutra, many of those subjects, uh, the reason is uh, this text this is the like, kind of a backbone of a uh, jewel ornament, you know. Uh, uh, so, 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 so that way, I thought maybe we we'll try to go. Yes, I know this is really difficult. So, I uh, myself a little bit hard with the English, but uh, we try try to work with that. I think we can manage. Try. Yeah. So here in the name, in the Sanskrit, Mahayana Sutra Alangara Nama Karika. In the text come from Tibet, India, they always use a Sanskrit name, keep the Sanskrit title. I think there's many reasons. One, I say, because in India, when people write in texts, Dharma texts or whatever, they have a rule and system. If you wrote something that is not really uh, uh, what called uh, correct, you will receive the punishment. You know, have to approval. There's a king and a scholar pro approval. Have to approve. And if you they they think you are wrong, then you receive the punishment. But if you wrote something that is really uh, you know, logical and uh, meaningful in the press, and you receive your title as a pintita. Yeah. So, so that reason, whatever bring the text from India is a kind of like a, uh, you know, reliable. Um, one is that. So, so that way, uh, showing the uh, Indian uh, Sanskrit name, and the two, uh, Buddha taught mainly in the Sanskrit language and uh, Pali or, you know, especially I think Mahayana teaching is mainly taught in the Sanskrit. So it's you receive the, the blessing of the language, what Buddha use. Two, and three, you will remember the kindness of the translator. Without the translator's hard work, even we don't understand the title, forget about the try to understand the meaning of the whole text. Make sense? So, 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 so that way you remember the appreciation of uh, that their translators dedicated their hard work, you know, you know, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, sometimes we don't remember. So, uh, I think this re reason this internet is really poor, and this reason uh, um, the Tibetan always keep the Sanskrit title. Okay, so this is in the Sanskrit Mahayana Sutra Alangara Nama Karikas. 
Mahayana is, a, you know, the, what is Mahayana? I mean, the great vehicles, you know, somebody who uh, dedicate, you know, uh, generate the bodhicitta, then practicing Dharma, that's called the Mahayana. Yeah. Sudra means the, what Buddha taught, that teaching of the Buddha is called the Sudra. And Alangara means the ornament, kind of like a, kind of make clear. Uh, so why is called the ornament, which come later? Okay, then a nama means the name. Okay, this name of the this text name is a sutra alanga mahayana sutra alanga. Okay, karika means the verse because so that is the uh, in the text the uh, in the Sanskrit. Uh, um, And uh, why is it called the Mahayana? Why it is called the, uh, you know, Alangara is meaning is come late, so we don't need to go to detail here. Uh, um, that is the part uh, text. Now here uh, said, pay homage to the, I think it should be, yeah, homage to the Buddha and Buddha Sattva. So this is a translators, not a, from Buddha Mitriya. When a Tibetan translating, King Tirepa make the rule. Okay. There's a teaching is a belong to the three baskets. So have to be make a homage as a three different homage. If the teaching is a belong to the Vinaya basket, have to pay homage to the omniscient one, because uh, only omniscient one know the depth of uh, what should do, what should it do, you know, like a, a rule or ethic is the only omniscient one knows. So when it's teaching is belong to the Mahayana must be, uh, Amivinaya must be pay homage to the omniscient one. And uh, if the teaching is a uh, belong to the um, Abhidhamma, then must pay homage to the Majushiri because the uh, Majushiri is the Lord of the speech or wisdom. And uh, understand of the Abhidhamma need a great wisdom. So if the teaching is uh, belong to the Abhidhamma, must pay homage to the Abhidha, Majushiri. If the teaching is a uh, belong to the Sutra basket, they pay homage to the Buddha and Buddha Sattva because the Sutra is a conversation of the Buddha and Buddha Sattvas. Between Buddha and Buddha Sattva, they have a conversation. And Buddha Sattva asks the question to the you know, Buddha and Buddha give the answer. So basic Sutra teaching is come from there. So that reason, this is all the Sutra make it clear. So that way, um, Mm -hmm. I think uh, this uh, uh, what called <clears throat> pay homage as a uh, uh, Buddha and Buddha Sattva. So sometimes this is also called the recognition of the basket. Homage as a recognition of the basket. You know, each basket have their own difference. So, so you see, this is a translator, Kaopesis, he's pay homage because the king make the system. You know, I think uh, at that time, actually Tibetan translator are really, really good. Uh, why is it really good? Is it one, he make the system and they have a, a dictionary. What word should translate from the Sanskrit to Tibetan? What certain word must keep as an original one. Because if you translate, it take many change. You know, so certain words are even in the Tibetan text, they keep as a like a uh, uh, Indra's name is a Koshika. Koshika never translate into the Tibetan as a keep. In the all the sutra, when you're reading, you will see certain name as a so there's a certain things that cannot translate it. Because if you translate, many change. You know, literally translate. So, and uh, certain word cannot translate as a literally, have to translate as a meaning. So they, he made the Tibetan, I think maybe only Tibetan have that dictionary for the how to translate it. 
So uh, later, actually, I heard one of the Korean master said, best translation from the original Sanskrit to the different language is the Tibetan one, closest one. He's Korean because he said our is not that close. Why is it one is a Tibetan as they use as a dictionary, make the system to always be combination of the Indian scholar and Tibetan translator. They never translate by the one Tibetan translator. You know, it have to be proved by the one Indian scholar. So if you read the old translation from the Sanskrit to Tibetan, they always have two in Indian scholar, Pedita and a Tibetan translator. Maybe some, some of my friends say, is a, maybe two translator and a one scholar, all together approve that, you know, so that reason the text became really close to original one. The, I heard uh, there was one text, I think Shantida was a one Buddhist conduct. Because first they didn't find in India, they translate from Tibetan to Sanskrit, back to, you know. Then later they found one from Nepal, like a match, like 90%. That's come close, that's really difficult. You know, original one. And uh, it later from Tibetan to translate in Sanskrit, match like 90 or 95%. So, so that is, you know, so, so, so the reason is it because Tibetan make really systemic and around that time, uh, earlier time, you know, when Tibetan was uh, ruled by the monarchy. But uh, when monarchy is a collapse, then Tibetan Buddhism also became a little bit, you know, I don't know what to say. Uh, so that reason is like Adisha or those master have to come to Tibet to try to make sure that you know, Dharma is not really uh, damaging by the misunderstand. Make sense? Yeah. So, <clears throat> so this is uh, why it's called the homage to the uh, Buddha and Bodhisattvas. Now he has said, he who know the meaning created the conversation showing the meaning with the flawless speech and uh, pressing out of the natural compassion for the suffering being in order to free them from the suffering for, uh, for being who follow the way of expounded in the supreme vehicle he received a uh, review the uh, excellent metaphor so reason is a this one why call the first maybe she translate then i will talk on this meaning Okay, so here said, he who know the meaning, it means the Buddha Midriya, the hard disciple of the Shajamuni Buddha. He know the, all the meaning of the Sutra. That way he composed it. Why? Because if we try to go to directly to the Sutra, you know, uh, as I have a difficulty to understand the uh, uh, what call this uh, potential path a result of the sutra depth of the sutra is really difficult to understand because most of sutra is not really order you know and uh, uh, not really order there's a uh, sometime uh, meaning is a <clears throat> different place different meaning and uh, putting them together is a, a really difficult uh, so um, so that reason, uh, this is a, um, Buddha Mitriya have to write because he know the meaning of the whole sutra complete. That way he said he know the meaning and uh, because of that, his knowing the meaning, create the conversation showing that meaning. So he wrote this text, try to show the meaning of those sutra and uh, uh, you know, show uh, uh, what called the a brief way, brief way, explain the uh, vast of the meaning of the sutra in the small text. And uh, why he can do is because he have the flawed speech and pressing. 
press him in the speech him in the basically uh, vote and uh, uh, pressing me in the sentence you know the uh, like a what called this uh, basically speech mean the sentence press uh, pre, uh, phrasing 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 yeah phrasing mean the more like stanza those whatever he taught basically those are not really have a uh, uh, flaws like a, our speech have a flaws because we sometimes we not say full sentence sometimes we not say clearly sometimes we couldn't say you know correct way so that kind of a uh, we can give the misinformation yeah because of the, our pronunciation way our um, understand way lots of way to we have a flow Flo flow yeah. false yeah uh, so but uh, Buddha Midriya like a, that kind of a uh, is a false fa 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 flawless flawless yeah flawless uh, so so that way that kind of a uh, can give teachings so why he give these teachings you know lots of people these day wrote write the books there's a what is the main reason money. yeah money or fame yeah. you know lots of people write the books for the money or fame but uh, Buddha Midriya is uh, totally different what reason is uh, out of naturally compassion for the suffering beings he want to liberate sentient being from the suffering for the how to liberate from the sentient being from the suffering is by knowing at the how to practice the dharma there are no other way can suffering liberate from the suffering make sense so only wisdom can eliminate the suffering you know uh, Wisdom also not just only uh, uh, wisdom, you know, have to be ultimate nature wisdom. Understand the ultimate nature. Uh, like like uh, if you try to meditate on the compassion, the compassion alone cannot eliminate the uh, suffering. Why? Because compassion itself is a part of the conceptual thought. The suffering is come from the conceptual thought. So com uh, com compassion is not becoming main uh, rule or uh, what called the uh, uh, antidote, complete antidote of the afflicted emotion. Have to be wisdom. Make sense? So, so, so that reason actually, if there is a, you know, you have to choose wisdom or ethic. Hypothetically, if you have to choose the wisdom and the ethic, you must choose a wisdom not ethic you can violate it, the ethic it's okay but you cannot violate it, the wisdom because without the wisdom there's no way to eliminate from the suffering yeah so so that that is a show he say he's a, he want to be being suffering being to order to free them from the suffering for uh, for a being who follow the way of expounded in the supreme vehicle he revealed the nature of the five un excelled. excelled metaphor. So how to get into this path? Can say how to eliminate. So you have to understand and the, how to understand this totally text is a, he uh, is a, a called the five uh, un excel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Five and excel metaphor. So uh, the, by this one. So this is five and excel metaphor is a complete the text. So that is a as a as a I have here one chart maybe. Can you see? I hope uh, the, in the Zoom people can see this one. So it's called the which is to be establishing one. That which is to be specifically known to. That which is to be uh, reflected upon three, that which is uh, inconceivable four, and uh, full accomplishment five. This five divided, the, this five uh, you know, subject is taught in this text. So that way, five uh, unexiled metaphors. So 
first one is the first chapter chapter of the uh, is called the what is the establishing it's establishing as a uh, called the uh, great vehicle as a buddha's word second one is a uh, what should be specifically know so you have to know how to take refuge how what is the buddha nature what is the buddhicitta how to how to practice the buddhicitta and now uh, what is the uh, what called reflection upon as a darkness power and uh, maturations and uh, what is the uh, uh, beyond reflection or inconceivable as a uh, in enlightenment yeah and uh, 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 what is the uh, when uh, approaching to the enlightenment as a uh, or or it's said fully accomplishment is a rest of the chapter 11 to until 21 so this is a whole text is a describing on those five make sense so so the reason uh, the reason Midriya have to write this, this is the ornament by Sudra explained by this five subject. That way called the ornament of the Mahayana Sudra. Why it's called the ornament? It's because of this five unexalted metaphor. So uh, this also show this first verse as a show that, you know, the person who can this kind of explain need certain knowledge is called the is called the four correct individual knowledges. It's called the knowing of the Dharma, knowing of the meaning, knowing of the word, and knowledge of the confident. So so here said uh, who know the meaning, it means the uh, knowing of the meaning. Okay. Uh, uh, and uh, I said showing that meaning, showing that meaning is a, somebody who have the confident, yeah. Then a flawless speech is a, uh, uh, have a knowing of the Dharma, yeah. Uh, otherwise it cannot be a flawless speech if you don't know, you know, what you're talking about. You have to be really well trained. Then knowing of the others, uh, you know, language they can communicate is called the knowing the uh, uh, word. So someone have to be, you know, have that kind of capacity. Lots of time we talk about the qualified teachers. So someone who qualified to explain this kind of sutra have to have that uh, this this uh, four individual knowledges. You know, for I think it's called the four, uh, four correct individual knowledge. In the Tibetan, it's called the Soso Yanda Varipashi. You know, Chyo Soso Yanda Varipashi. So, so, so that is a show from this. So that is what the Buddha Midriya. The reason Buddha Midriya is a capable to directly and uh, write this kind of ornament. Yeah. So now next one is said. What is the five unexalted? Uh, metaphors why there's those five you know uh, as a uh, um, what called the establishing one specifically knowing two uh, you know reflection upon the three uh, uh, what called inconceivable four and fully accomplishment five this four this five so the, here example he said the cra cra crafting of, of the piece of the gold one the bloom of the lotus flower, two, eating the well-cooked food when starving, three, hearing good news, four, and open the chest of the jewel, five. This is five. So first he said establishing. Establishing means the, the, this is the next chapter, which is the the uh, great vehicle with his the Buddha's word because I think maybe right now lots of people may not understand maybe think or oh, this is not necessary but at the at that time in India lots of people believe Theravada tradition lots of believe the Mahayana is not Buddha's teachings
So, so certain things that Mahayana taught is, is a, uh, kind of like looks against with the Buddhist, you know, teachings. Um, so, so we will come, that's later, come. Uh, actually, recently, a few years ago, I was listening to one, um, you know, um, Sri Lanka monk, he still believed that way. He said, Buddha's original teaching is a uh, Theravada. Mahayana and Vajayana come later. But at, around that time, you know, when Asanga came, around that time, lots of people believe that Mahayana is a, created by the, uh, uh, what called the Mara, to try to keep the sentient being continually in the samsara. Like, for example, in the Mahayana talk about the emptiness, they literally try to see empty. You know, she, she said that's a mistake. Two, in the Mahayana said, we have to stay in the samsara continually until samsara is end. Yeah? In the Mahayana said, and the Theravada said, that is a mistake. If you long as you stay in the samsara, why you practice Dharma? You don't need to practice Dharma. You are already in the samsara. That's a Mara try to keep you continually in the samsara. That way this is a Mara's philosophy. So that kind of a, uh, uh, idea came because people misunderstood about that, like uh, emptiness and uh, like no form, no sound, no smell, that kind of word. So, so that way sudden people don't believe the Mahayana is actually Buddhist teaching around that time. Now I don't think so there's argument, you know. So, so around that time, so that reason they have to write this. That time necessary. Now it's not necessary. You know, people like ninety or percent Buddhism agree the Mahayana and Vajrayana is taught by Buddha. Yeah. So, so here, so this is like a said. This is like a gold, uh, uh, piece of gold carving, making jewelry. You know, gold doesn't matter what you make jewelry or not. It's so always a bit gold. But if you make the jewelry as a uh, uh, it it become uh, more ornamented, yeah. So through the this uh, explanation of the first chapter, remove the, your doubt, remove uh, you know uh, your uh, misunderstand, uh, remove your uh, wrong understand. So that way, like a piece of gold made as a jewelry. It's a gold, it's always a gold, you know, it doesn't matter. So, so that, that reason is an establishing, make sure that Mahayana is the Buddhist, truly Buddhist teachings. So this is like a example, like a piece of gold make the jewelry. And second one is a blue seam of the lotus. So person who have a, really devotion to the Mahayana teachings, then you have to take refuge. This refuge is a little bit different than Mah uh, Theravada refuge, which come later, you know, what is different. The Mahayana refuge. And potential means the uh, uh, family or uh, have a uh, seat. Okay, Mahayana seat. Then uh, uh, spiritual intent means the general Bodhicitta. And practice as a uh, once you generate a bodhicitta, you have to practice the training of the bodhicitta. So that one is specifically not have to know somebody who want to be become a Buddha. Yeah. So that is the like a blossom of the lotus. So when lotus is blossom, then you see everything detail. Yeah. So like that. Then eating well cooked food when starving as a like a Sadness, uh, power, and maturations. So, sadness means the uh, um, suchness, a meaning of the suchness, meditating on the meaning of the suchness. Through the meditation on the meaning of that suchness or sadness, then you have a, you know, accomplishment of the miracle power and such, so and so. That is called the power. Then, uh, by that meditation, you mature your all the sense faculty, or the, especially your mind is a completely mature, fully maturation. So this is like a eating food, 
when you are special when you're hungry when you eat food that's so delicious so you will have actually taste you know true taste of the uh, dharma is it through the practice of the realization of the suchness make sense so then true joy is come there so so that way it's like cooking food when stoving then hearing good news is it about the enlightenment uh, which is a uh, inconceivable for us but still we can study we can meditate we can learn about the uh, in, uh, fully enlightenment about the buddha is this is like a uh, 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 what called hearing good news hearing good news is like a, when you're going to receive some reward first you receive the letter yeah said you're going to receive the reward the reward is not in your hand but you got the news you're going to receive the reward same way when we about the thinking about the buddhahood we starting contemplating meditating you know fully enlightenment it is inconceivable because beyond our understand but we have some information we will get get it get. it's the same as a before the actually reward you get the letter L letter what call yeah letter, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 then the f final one say say so last one is said to open the chest of the jewels then once you follow with those subject then you like open the chest you know when you open the chest then you see the all the jewels whatever jewel in the box same way through the pact rest of the practice of the uh, interest and all the so and so those uh, as a as a like opening the jewel actually jewel through the you know so this 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 five example this uh, this uh, verse second is an example meaning is those five uh and an exalt exalted exalt and exhale metaphor so these two have to come come a little bit complicated here but this is a meaning is to talk about here in this text so if you know this one then you will you will get some uh, information or uh, oh, that now we have to go through this Um, dạ và ở đây thì khi mà chúng ta nói à, ở cái đoạn kể kế tiếp ở cái đoạn kể thứ hai à, khi chúng ta nói là à, giống như là hàng để lấy vật dụng giống như hoa đen ở cái độ mà nở rộ rồi à, giống như là khi mà chúng ta có thể được ăn một cái bữa ăn ngon khi mà chúng ta đói rồi à, như chúng ta có thể nghe được những cái tin tức uh, tốt lành rồi hay là khi mà chúng ta có thể mở được uh, một cái kho tàng mở được một cái um, kho báu uh, thì những cái điều này đều uh, tạo được uh, cái sự uh, hoan hỷ và nó sẽ tạo nên năm cái nghĩa của giáo pháp một cách trang nghiêm nhất uh, và khi mà chúng ta nói là tại sao ở đây chúng ta nói là À, như vàng làm vật dụng thì có nghĩa là ở cái bước đầu tiên khi mà à, chúng ta đi vào cái bước à, duyên khởi à, thì duyên khởi có nghĩa là à, khi mà à, Đức Phật chia sẻ những cái lời giáo huấn của Ngài rồi à, bởi vì à, khi mà ngày xưa thì khi mà Ngài giảng Pháp thì Ngài, Ngài giảng rất là nhiều ở lại khác nhau rồi à, cái người mà có thể à, chỉ dẫn có thể à, giảng lược hoặc là có thể giới thiệu hoặc có thể giải thích được cho chúng ta thì phải có là cái người có được bốn cái đặc điểm là phải thấu hiểu về giáo pháp và phải có đủ cái sự tự tin và có đủ cái khả năng để à, giảng dạy hoặc chia sẻ được giáo pháp và cái người đó cũng phải thấu hiểu được đầy đủ cái ý nghĩa à, và khi mà có thể hiểu được nghĩa của cái bản kinh nắm rõ được giáo pháp thì người ta mới có được cái sự tự tin và khi mà người ta có thể 
giảng giải người ta có thể um, giải thích được những cái giáo pháp đó rồi thời của đức phật thì khi mà ta nói về cái sự uh, bắt đầu cái sự duyên khởi thì cái pháp đại thừa vào cái thời điểm đó uh, thì bởi vì khi mà ngài nói uh, thì uh, đa số là người ta khi mà người ta đến nghe uh, người ta vẫn theo cái truyền thống của nguyên thủy bởi vì chỉ người ta ít có theo cái giáo pháp của đại thừa là bởi vì À, người ta có những cái sự bối rối, có những cái sự hoang mang, người ta nghĩ rằng là à, gọi là pháp đại thừa là được à, tạo bởi những cái ma vương người ma ra à, là do có những à, cái à, điều khi mà nói về tấn không gọi là không có cái này không có cái kia thì người ta nghĩ thôi cái việc mà nói không có cái này không có cái kia đó là một cái lỗi lầm, một cái điều sai rồi ví dụ như khi mà nói là à chúng ta nguyện là chúng ta sẽ ở lại luân hồi À, cho đến khi nào mà à, luân hồi nó kết thúc à, để chúng ta sẽ thực hành có phép cho đến khi nào mà luân hồi nó kết thúc à, thì cái, cái việc đó thì chỉ có những cái loài ma vương mới nói mà thôi bởi vì cho dù bởi vì họ sẽ nhầm lẫn là, là cho dù họ chúng ta có thực hành giáo pháp hay không thì chúng ta đã được sinh ra ở trong cái cõi luân hồi này rồi à, cho nên khi mà nói về cái việc gọi là không sắc không thanh không hương vân vân À, thì khi mà nói như vậy thì người ta không thể hiểu được à, mặc dù những cái điều đó à, người ta không có nghĩ được là những cái điều đó là do chính đức phật à, đã dạy à, và à, như vậy thì khi mà à, ngài đã nói khi, cái thời mà của ngài vô trước à, đã xuất hiện thì ngài mới có thể phá tan đập tan được những cái nghi ngờ Uh, của những cái mọi người uh, và nó giống như là cái hoa nó đang nở rộ thì uh, khi mà những cái nghi ngờ đó nó được uh, có được cái sự giải thích có được uh, cái sự thấu hiểu đó thì lúc đó họ mới bắt đầu họ uh, uh, phát được họ uh, sinh khởi được uh, cái tâm để mà quy y và khi mà họ sinh khởi được tâm để quy y như vậy Um, thì nói um, họ um, um, bắt đầu nó sinh khởi ngoài cái việc quy y thì uh, cái gọi là uh, giống như là cái tiềm tàng năng lực đó chính là sinh khởi được cái tâm bồ đề uh, và uh, đó chính là cái hạt giống của đại thừa uh, và đối với lại tâm bồ đề là cái tâm mong cầu đạt đến cái sự giác ngộ đạt được đến cái quả vị phật uh, và đó là lý do tại sao nói đó là uh, giống như bông hoa đang nở Um, và um, tiếp theo cái điểm thứ ba là khi mà chúng ta nói là giống như là à, ăn được một cái món ăn ngon khi mà chúng ta bị đau uh, thì ở đây là chúng ta có thể thực hành được uh, chúng ta có thể hiểu được thấy được uh, cái sự uh, gọi là uh, chân như thì chúng ta có thể thấy được uh, thông qua cái việc mà thực hành thì thông qua cái việc thực hành chúng ta có thể thấy được uh, cái sự chân như cái sự như thị rồi khi mà chúng ta có thể uh, thông qua cái hiện tượng đó chúng ta hiểu rõ được cái pháp tánh chân như thì chúng ta sẽ sinh khởi được những cái năng lực uh, rồi qua những cái thiền tượng đó thì cái tâm thức của chúng ta nó dần nó sáng rõ hơn nó có thể chính nó nó có thể cái, uh, cái giác quan của chúng ta nó có thể uh, được um, định tĩnh và nó có thể nhận diện nó có thể đạt được cái sự tỉnh thức À, vì vậy nó mới gọi là tại sao chúng ta có thể cảm thấy gọi là chúng ta cảm thấy hỉ là cảm thấy ăn ngon khi chúng ta nghe được những cái tin tức tốt lành à, là như thế nào bởi vì khi mà chúng ta đã à, có cái sự thực hành có cái sự à, tu tập thì chúng ta đang dần đi đến với cái sự giác ngộ giống như là khi mà chúng ta đi học à, chúng ta có được một cái thành tựu gì đó thì để trước khi mà chúng ta có thể nhận được cái giải thưởng thì chúng ta sẽ nhận được một cái thông báo là à, chúng ta đã à, sẽ có chúng ta sẽ nhận được cái giải thưởng đó à, thì giống như là một cái thông tin một cái cập nhật cho chúng ta biết à, những cái điều đó nó chưa có hoàn toàn nằm ở trong tay của chúng ta tại cái thời điểm đó mà nó chỉ là giống như là những cái thông tin báo cho chúng ta biết có nghĩa là chúng ta có thể có được cái khả năng 
à, nhận thức được và chúng ta lại tiếp tục đi trên cái con đường đó à, bởi vì những cái điều đó trước đây nó vượt khỏi cái tầm hiểu biết chúng ta và bây giờ à, ít ra chúng ta đã biết được cái hướng đi chúng ta đã biết được cái con đường đi à, và chúng ta đang đi trên chính cái con đường đó để đi đến cái đích của nó à, và cái điểm thứ năm là như khi mà chúng ta mở được một cái cáp châu báu chúng ta mở được một cái kho tàng châu báu là khi mà chúng ta à, đã đi theo đúng cái con đường chúng ta đã À, đi đến được cái đích của mình và lúc đó giống như là chúng ta mở một cái kho tàng và chúng ta thấy được tất cả mọi báu vật ở trong đó. Yes. Okay, so uh, uh, um, now question is if if sutra is already well explained but the thought really explained why need to be clarified for that you know why need to be ornament with this five so so that that answer is a when those are naturally beautiful one ornamented with the beauty behold themselves reflecting on the gla glass in the bringing them consummating delight so too when the meaning of the dharma which is excellent word are always been naturally full of a virtue as a class uh, is clear why it bring the wise great joy greatest joy so what does it mean is a if somebody have a really naturally good looking you know that's already have a naturally good looking you don't need to do plastic surgery or anything <laughs> but that naturally good looking one you know become a model ugly one not become a model so then what naturally good looking one put the ornament then when you put the ornament and put the front the mirror and become a you know delight then you see the your own beauty make sense so 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 this is like a this one is it is not saying is it is a same way that is an example it's a metaphor or example yeah, yeah. the meaning is it is not try to make the clear meaning of the sutra just try to review that meaning to, that we can understand present to us Pre presentation presentation yeah? yeah through the present skillful presentation to we can understand that to naturally beauty of the to uh, great meaning of the sutra make sense so that is what it mean sutra is not do you buddha mitriya not try to make the sutra more beautiful better meaningful Make sense? Meaning is not changing anything. Just through the presentation and the meaning is become more delightful. Like a, if you put the ornament yourself, you're not going to see anything. You know, you're not going to enjoy yourself. But when you go to front of the mirror, then you say, wow, that's great. <laughs> you get truly joy because you see that clearly. Same way that naturally virtue, naturally fully virtue means the completely good quality. Buddha's teaching have no flaws, yeah, no faults. So naturally virtue, but uh, if there's no good presentation, can say presentation? Yes. Yeah, no good presentation. A lot of us, we're not going to understand. Like uh, without the mirror, you cannot see your own beauty. Yeah, same way, without the, uh, the presentation, you cannot uh, see the beauty of the uh, that uh, 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 Buddhist teachings, you know, word. So that reason Buddha Midriya bring it by clarifying with the, uh, his presentation of the commentary, so that make the ornament. So that reason need. Like uh, if you want to see your own natural beauty, you need Miru. Same way, if you want to understand the true beauty of the Buddha's teaching and go through the commentary. I think most of us have a hard time to, if you, I mean, you, if you read the Sutra, for example, you know, directly read the Sutra, I'm not saying you will not understand, you know, you will understand all the, what is the saying there, but it's not the full package there. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Like if you read the Heart Sutra, for example, you, sometimes actually there's a misunderstanding will come through the heart sutra 
So that reason, some people saying is a Mahayana is a not Buddhist teaching. Why? Because they misunderstand. Like, a, what does emptiness mean? Oh, there's a nothing. You know, empty, empty means the nothing. So, so question is empty is a word is called the shune. Yeah, shune means the zero. Is zero is a number or not? You have to ask that one. If zero is a non-number, then yes, shuni means the nothing. If zero is a number, it's not nothing. Yeah. But can you count at zero? So that kind of, a, we don't understand. Without the relying on the, you know, uh, qualified teacher's explanation on the sudra, sudra like uh, Nagarjuna and Asanga, is a, we are not capable to directly engage in sudra. Make sense? So we have a, so that reason, the, 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 uh, the, you know, those commentary or the Shastra must uh, presentation how to uh, get the Sudra. So that reason, when this kind of presentation is a really well decorated, well organized, then presentation and people get a great joy. Like, uh, I think, Right now, Western teaching skill is really good. Why? Because they know how to how to presentation. They put the char chart. What call? Chart. Chart. Yeah, like put the you know meaning is. Uh, what call the sl slice slice sl slice. You you. Yeah, teacher. They use on that. Uh, you know, like. Yeah, presentation. Like PowerPoint. Yeah, PowerPoint. <laughs> like a, slice, how to put the slide. PowerPoint. Yeah, yeah like slide, sl slide. Slide? Slide? Yeah. Slide. yeah. So it, it makes much more easier to understand. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so that way, uh, I think uh, uh, Westerners have a much more skill than Tibetan Tibet just read the books and try to. Uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a little bit more complicated. A sutra is similar like that. You know, Shastra is more like a presentation of a make the really easy way to get. So, so I think this reason, uh, 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 Midriya say, is a, is a necessary to try to reach to the, understand the Sudra through the Shastra, through the commentary. You know, <clears throat> because uh, sometimes people say, oh, I like original Buddhist teaching. Yes, of course. Everybody is studying original Buddhist teaching. Even you study commentary, you study original teaching, but that make the more presentation. Yeah. I mean, uh, now it's a degeneration time, and we our time. We, most people don't have time, or we are so uh, you know uh, um, what called that uh, caught it with the. Uh, destruction so that way we don't have that much time to go to so detail about from the those big texts uh, so it's easier to if you go through the Buddhist time lots of monks they can memorize many pages like Asanga he can memorize so many so for that those, those people if they just read the sutra, they can understand because they will remember remembering everything. But for us, even we read that ten times, so we should still don't remember mm -hmm. lots of things, you know. And the no way do we remember all those teachings. One hundred and eight volume of books. <laughs> we even don't understand, don't remember one text, jewel ornament. How many times we read? <laughs> Still, you know, every time read, oh, there's someone new one. <laughs> so, so, so that reason, I think we need some more constructed, uh, well organized, uh, organized, yeah, well uh, re uh, presentation, a really nice one. That's called Shastra. Mm -hmm. So th that way, it's a, so Bid what Bidri is saying is a, he's not trying to make that, uh, uh, you know. Uh, better meaning. Nothing need to ex make the better meaning. 
Buddha's teachings. But just try to presentation is make better. That way get. So I think this is a skillful speech mean that way. You know, some people know how to explain without using so many words. But some people, they use so many words, you know, but never get to that really the key point. <laughs> they talk, 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 talk. <laughs> yeah? No, I do that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Without getting to the, really to, to you, what you want to say, yeah. just take it so long. Yes, okay, so here said the medicine like a medicine that smell few full foul. Uh, foul yet tastes quite sweet it tries tastes good I think said so. not that the Dharma also has a two aspect meaning and word so this is what is mean is the saying is a uh, like a, some medicine have a really bad smell. Yeah, similarly, sometimes wood is not really pleasant in the Mahayana. Like, for example, talk about the emptiness. Look like there's nothing, you know. We say no form, no sound, no smell, no taste. And another way is to say, is a, uh, is say, is a, like in the Mahayana, you have to do the hardship to practice it. You have to even, you have to give up the, your head, you know, limbs to pack part of the Bodhisattva practice. And you have to do that is a long time, like a three great years. So, so that kind of a, a long period of time, you have to stay in the samsaras. And so th that kind of word is unpleasant. Yeah? yeah? But from that unpleasant too, if you realize, then have a great taste. So, so like, um, for example, emptiness is not really talking about the, like, as a shuni, as a nothingness. So in the Chitta Madra, all the phenomena are divided into the three subjects. The first is called the uh, imputed phenomena, or sometimes called the imagination, imaginary. Dependent to and absolute. So it's here saying about, about the empty. It's, a, it's a not, as a, not saying as a, there's nothing. No form. When talking about the no form in the Heart Sutra, it's not saying there's no whatsoever, no form. It's talking about the form is empty. So if you look, look at the Heart Sutra, beginning said five aggregate are empty of inherent existence. It did, in the, even the Heart Sutra, it didn't say five, five aggregate are empty, you know, empty of inherent existence. So it means the saying is empty of a impute. So if the Mahayana saying is five aggregate truly not exist for whatsoever, yeah. just empty, then they don't have to use as empty of inherent existence. Also, mm. they never say, you know, uh, Uh, no form. Basically, they're not really saying form is emptiness. Mm. That's different. No form and form is emptiness. It's different. Mm. So what this mean is, is uh, we have an Im imputation on the dependent. Dependent means the appearance of the form. We have an impute. What, how we impute is, uh, oh, this is solid, it's existent, it's a real. And we put thus all the, uh, you know, imagination imaginary or impute mm. so that is not real make sense uh, so that way uh, it's a word in the Mahayana it sounds really negative but if you understand the word truly as a bring to the great meaning make sense so that way there's a meaning and word sometimes word directly is a little bit difficult to understand but it doesn't mean that, that they bring that word, the meaning is bring to the nothingness. So 
in the Mahayana, they talk emptiness is not talking about the meaning is not talking about the nothingness. Make sense? Empty and nothingness is different. Word as a unpleasant as a empty, but meaning as a not unpleasant as a empty. Is it called a, you know? Uh, it's not nothing. Make sense? So that way, it's a word and meaning. Sometimes it's a little bit different. Because it's a phenomena are uh, you divide it into the three uh, in the Chitta Mantra philosophy, divide it into three impute, dependent, and absolute. So, in here, when talking about the emptiness, it's not talking about the empty of dependent. You know, even the Vajrayana, you look the song Diluba Singh said, You don't, uh, you know, not worry about the appearance. You know, because we are not uh, caught uh, bondage in the samsara by appearance. Some, uh, we are bondage in the samsara by attachment, grasping on it. So appearance, you don't need to worry about. Don't grasp on that. Grasping is the impute. Because we have lab put a label, good, bad, you know, like, dislike. You know, attachment, hatred, this old impute is come from the appearance. So that appearance, you don't need to eliminate. You need to eliminate that this discrimination of a impute. So, so once you learn that one, then emptiness bring you the great joy. So that way, like the same as a medicine. Medicine, smell not good, sudden medicine, but taste good. And not just taste good, it will heal all your sickness. So if you understand this too, the Mahayana teaching of the emptiness and, uh, you know, great compassion, those, and uh, truly eliminate all the suffering of sickness, like uh, this, those teachings are like a Buddhist, um, uh, great medicine. So, so I think that is what I mean here. I think it's going to, okay, so now here's it. This difficulty, Dharma, intensive and profound, is like the monarch, difficult to please. Yet, if it please, it like, likewise will bestow the richness of a supreme quality. This is mean that, like Mahayana is not that easy to practice. It's really difficult. That we call the Buddhist Sattva. Sattva means the courageous one. Need great courage to practitioner. It's not that easy. But that easy, the, the difficulty one can become easier if you have the, you know, extensive and profound. It means the wisdom and the method. So wisdom and a methodly, then you can practice those all difficult one is skillfully. If you have the skill, it's not difficult. So this is a difficult is for the person who has lack of the skill. Make sense? So uh, like I mean, if, if you look that someone is a professional, they make things easily do. Yeah. Then if you're not professional, when you try to do that, it's not easy, very difficult. So same way, it's about the skill. Once you have the skill, it's become not difficult. So once you do with the extensive and profound, extensive profound means the great compassion and emptiness. It's not difficult. So you can uh, accomplish this one. Difficult one, without the difficulty, you, you can accomplish. So Mahayana is a, like a monarch said. As a monarch, it means the king. You cannot just please easy by kings give you some food or something, you know. If you try to give to the king, you know, a really nice uh, uh, cloth, even that is a designer, it, it's not going to please that much because they have more than that. So it's not easy to please the king. But once you can please the king, your life is settled. You can have anything you want. So. So, so similarly, Mahayana is not easy to be practiced. Once you have the skill to practicing that, then you can accomplish it. Once you accomplish it, you will get a great benefit. So that, that way it's the same richness of the sublime quality 
as a come from the Mahayana practice. But that is not, you know, is not going to get with easily. You have to have a great skill and method and, uh, you know, wisdom to accomplishing that one. So it's is similarly like a how to, you know, try to please the kings. So you cannot please the king by small things. You have to please them great way. Once great way, you please them and you, you fulfill any wish you have. But that easy, uh, that difficult one is a, for the Mahayana practitioner, for them, not difficult as a, what we assume, because they have skillful. We don't have skill. Make sense? So, person with a skill and without a skill, when you try to do some, some kind of job, it's totally different. So that way in Tibetan we said, it's a stronger, the older skill make the stronger than youth's strength. Yeah, youth strength have not that much uh, great greatness as a older uh, skill. So then last one said the pure and priceless Jew will not be delighted the eye of those who cannot see the world. This Dharma is the same those who lack of a discernment. Discernment that I kind of understand, yeah? Yeah. yeah. But for those who are their opposite, it means they have a you know, each will bring a, a commensurate delight, like a you know like a great delight. So there's one story. This one maybe uh, we'll talk about. Story was a, there was one Hindu uh, priest. Okay. And uh, he had one attendant, servant. That servant served him many years. That, that, that the, you know, him, the teacher served many years, a long time. Then one day the servant said, I was a really, uh, a faithful, really, you know, to serving to you. And I really dedicated my life to serve you that, that many years. Now, please give me the one of the most profound teachings. Okay. So, so then, then, uh, um, then the priest said, okay, I will give you most profound teachings. Then he, he said, okay, thank you so much. Then he went and he said, um, and then she said, that is? He said, priest said, teacher said, yes, that is. That's our most profound teaching I can give. He said, this is you give to everyone. What is different? You know, everybody knows Om. Um. Is there nothing different? So there's nothing profound. Then the priest said, okay, first, before you receive the answer, I give you this rock. He gave one rock. Go to the market to find the price value. And he went to one person who's selling rice and said, can you, you know, buy this rock? I want to buy some rice. And he said, well, I just give you some rice for maybe a cup of rice for this roll. This roll, just I don't need. You know, they, he didn't exchange. He went to different. So everybody says something like that. Then nobody see the value of the rock. Then there's a, someone who knows the, the rock. He said, where did you get this rock? This is a priceless rock. You know, only royal family have this kind of a stone. How you did get this one? So he said, oh, my teacher gave me. Then he went back. Then teacher actually received often from the king. That kind of like some kind of diamond or something rock. So teacher said, see, it's a rock. But only who recognizing the value see the two, uh, you know, what called? What is worth? What is worth? Rest is just see as a rock. Same way. Om is the same word, but only who have the wisdom can see the true meaning. Make sense? So that way, this is a, 
uh, teaching is it, you know, if <clears throat> it's the same way as Mahayana is it. Only who have the great wisdom, then they can understand the uh, value uh, or worth, how worth is, you know, value of uh, the teaching. Otherwise, the rest is it, they don't understand. Same as a jewelry. And a jewelry, most of people don't understand what is. Like uh, for me, fake one and real one, I cannot distinguish. <laughs> <laughs> really, I cannot tell. But people who know what is the fake, what is the real one, they immediately said, wow, this is a really good one. And they say, oh, this is a fake one. So one time somebody gave me some kind of necklace. It's a really good one, actually a real one. And to, I give to my mom, I said, because she visit me, so I have nothing to give. So I give that one, that there's a mala actually. And she said, oh, this is plastic. She gave to someone. <laughs> it's not really plastic. <laughs> She have no idea what it is. So similar like that. When we're not recognizing, say we don't have the value. Same as the Mahayana teachings, you know, that way. So, uh, <laughs> so, so only who can see the value of the Mahayana is a, uh, a wise one, you know, uh, what called the supreme. The, uh, so, so especially in India, it's not really popular. Like. Uh, I heard this when Adisha came to Tibet, he was really surprised that people, you know, outside, like, commonly chanting, everybody chanting the Heart Sutra. In India, teaching a Heart Sutra is a kind of like people chant secretly because a lot of people misunderstand. A lot of people have a, a suffering of hearing that sound, those sound, which is for them sense like negative, like no sound, no smell, no taste. It's kind of like a going to nihilism. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I think, so So those reason have to understand the depth meaning of what it is saying without the understanding of the depth meaning of what it is, then just judging on the someone's, you know, character, someone's lineage, someone's teaching, that's a heavy negative karma. This day we do that one. So next next chapter is all about that one. So we will see that. Okay, thank you. We we'll stop here today. Chan joy sem joy rem boy ye bai nyam bai mem bai kone kondo pe oi cho ta da kondo tham je je tu son do sa ba da ye be je ve sa wa ta da se je tha je nyu do la la ma ba ya da ba so be jan ju ren bo je to pra ju je se ja ku se kun jin chu je je ten de na la wan do de Rejebejete basite ba shetu tosan kumbenzin juji.